Today I'll be explaining how to use the SCAT-5 to assess patients with a potential concussion. SCAT stands for Sports Concussion Assessment Tool, and the SCAT-5 is the fifth version of this tool. This tool is revised regularly, and we are anticipating version 6 in the next year or so. Whilst this is a tool primarily used in sport, the SCAT-5 is a valuable tool for assessing any head injury. This tool can be used immediately after the injury, as an assessment on the same day, for example in an emergency department or in a general practice setting, or for follow-up on subsequent days. The SCAT is a multimodal tool that assesses different neurological domains. The three modes assessed by the SCAT-5 are the patient's symptoms, their cognitive function or memory, and their balance. The first page of the SCAT is useful when providing immediate care to a patient, such as if you are covering a sporting event. This page contains key points regarding basic first aid, recognising and removing someone from play, and when to refer to the emergency department. Page two focuses on, a, on the care of the patient immediately after the injury. In step one, you will see red flags for a structural head injury are labelled. If any of these are present, this patient should be transferred supported urgently to emergency care. Page three is used for off-field assessment of the patient. This can be pitch side in your clinic, in a medical room, or in the emergency department. For step one, record personal details of this patient if they are new to your care. Step two is symptom evaluation. This is very valuable, and we use this immediately after injury and at each patient review. It's the best test for tracking recovery from a confirmed concussion. Collecting accurate symptoms is extremely important and the following instructions should be used. Okay, Luke, here's the page where we have a look at your symptoms since you've had your injury. Can you just read the top paragraph to me, please? Yep. Uh, the athlete should be given the symptom form and asked to read the, uh, this instruction paragraph out loud, then complete the symptom scale. For the baseline assessment, the athlete should rate his or her symptoms based on how he or she typically feels and for the post-injury assessment, the athlete should rate their symptoms at this point in time. Good, thank you. So could you fill this in for me now, please? The athlete should be given the symptom form and asked to read this instruction paragraph out loud, then complete the symptom scale. For the baseline assessment, the athlete should rate his or her symptoms based on how she, he or she typically feels, and for the post-injury assessment of the athlete, should rate their symptoms at this point in time. It's most important for the patient to complete this themselves, but if they are struggling, prompt with questions about each symptom. They are scoring how severe each symptom is, zero is nothing present, and six is severe. At the end, tally the total number of new or altered symptoms out of 22, and then add up the severity of these symptoms. This symptom checklist can be used at each follow-up to monitor for recovery or deterioration. Page four begins with cognitive assessment, similar to a mini mental state examination, in that we are assessing short and longer term memory, the ability to process instructions and some more challenging tasks. Next, complete the orientation questions. So Luke, what month is it? January. And what is the date today? The 19th of January. And what is the day of the week? It's a Tuesday. And what year is it? 2021. 20, and what time is it right now? About 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Thank you, good. Okay, now Luke, I'm gonna test your immediate memory. So I'm going to list 10 words and I'd like you to repeat those after me. Jacket, arrow, pepper, cotton, movie, dollar, honey, mirror, saddle, anchor. Jacket, arrow, pepper, dollar, honey, uh, anchor, and that's all I can remember. Okay, good, thank you. You will repeat the reading of this 10 word list three times to the patient. The results of the three tests are the total number of words remember, remembered with the maximum number being 30. For the digits backwards test, many people misunderstand the instructions. The easiest way to remember this is to stop the test when the injured person is unable to repeat the same length string on two occasions. Okay, Luke, 
I'm going to read a string of numbers and when I'm done, you repeat them back to me in the reverse order. For example, if I say 719, you say 917, okay? 493. 394 Two seven seven two four six four. So we cease when our patient has been unable to repeat the digits after two tries. The score for this trial is four. Then we ask the patient to name the months in reverse order. December, November, October, September, August, July, June. May, April, March, February, January. Good. Then add up the scores for this page and total. Page five begins with a quick neurological screen. Did our patient read out loud the instructions? Is their neck pain free on passive movement? Do they have double vision? And can they perform the finger nose finger test? The next section is important as we are checking balance. We use the modified Best test, this is the most challenging part of the SCAT to perform. The BESS or B-E-S-S test uses three different stances to assess balance. First is the double leg stance, next is the single leg stance. Ask the patient which is the dominant or kicking foot, then stand on the other one. Last is the tandem stance with the dominant foot at the front. Each of these positions is tested over 20 seconds, so you will need a timer watch or phone. During the 20 seconds, we are watching for the patient to display poor balance or make errors. There are six types of errors, hands lifted off the iliac crest, opening eyes, stepping, stumbling or falling, abducting the hip more than 30 degrees, lifting the forefoot or heel and remaining out of the test position for more than five seconds. Luke, it's much easier to perform this test without shoes, so I'm going to ask you to take them off. I'm going to ask you to shut your eyes. If you lose your position, you can open your eyes briefly to return to the starting position. You then conduct single leg stance and tandem stance for 20 seconds in exactly the same manner. The final test in the SCAT is a check of delayed recall. This involves asking the patient to recall as many of the immediate memory words that they can remember. So Luke, how many words can you remember from before? Um, jacket, anchor, dollar, cotton, honey, um, and that's probably it. Good, thank you. The scat is now complete and the decision box in step six can be used to record the results of this assessment. So the patient might have had a scat done in an emergency department when he visited last weekend. I can compare today and see if his symptoms, cognition and balance have changed since then. Page six is really helpful to give to a patient or family member. It contains post-injury advice, the most important being to rest from both physical activity and cognitive activities, for example, screen time. If an activity provokes symptoms, you should advise the patient to avoid that activity. Also advise patients to avoid alcohol, anti-inflammatories, and not to drive a car until cleared by a doctor. You should also advise the patient when they should return for their next medical review. Page seven contains helpful instructions and wording for each section which is useful if you forget the instructions for your patient. Page eight provides helpful concussion education right through from immediately post-injury to a graduated return to work or sport. Again, it's helpful to read through while you are learning about concussion management. So how do you interpret the SCAT? There's no pass or fail in this test. Each patient needs to be evaluated with a full medical history 
an examination, a scat test, possibly a video of their injury if available, and in the context of their progress since the injury. The scat can certainly show us deficits in certain areas. For example, if the patient is a 20 year old student studying business, can't recite three numbers backwards, and struggles to stand on one foot, I might have more concerns than with a 68 year old who can't recite five numbers backwards, or who has poor balance as normal for her. The first time you perform a scat on a patient, the overall score isn't really useful. Obvious outlying results can guide you that there might be a problem in that area. When performing the scat for serial assessment, you can compare, you, can compare your score against the patient's previous results. Make sure you compare symptom score to previous symptom score, balance score to previous balance, and cognition score to previous cognition scores. This is more useful than just an overall numerical score itself. If this patient is leaving your care or if you are in an emergency department, I suggest providing them with a photo or a photocopy of their SCAT result. That way the next doctor can review their progress and can compare serial SCATs. Hopefully I've given you a feel for how to perform the SCAT5 test with your patient. The SCAT is a very valuable tool supporting a structured and consistent approach to serial assessment of patients with head injuries.